every day, don't we? Fuck you! Going home time, smashing up the classroom. Based in the London borough of Lewisham, New Woodlands is a unique primary school. It provides schooling for pupils that the mainstream schools in the area find difficult to cope with. Children who've been excluded, children with challenging behaviour. We have 60 boys actually in the school. We have pupils aged as young as four and a half, believe it or not, up to the age of 11. There was a time when we would never see a child under the age of nine, um, which for us is rather worrying because a lot of the younger children haven't made the early attachments they need to. Yes? My mum cleans up and does the washing. That's the role of your mum, right? Backgrounds vary enormously. There's so many different reasons why children come here. The thing they have in common is that they need help to monitor their behaviour, work out strategies for possibly coping with their anger feelings. One, two, three. Together. It's trying to modify children's behaviour so that they can actually function successfully, whether it be in mainstream school and in life in general. Fit for another day? <laughs> we have boys from all range of situations in the school, um, lots from one-parent families. We have lots of looked-after children in foster care and children's homes. So there is a massive range of challenging situations, I think, for these children. It's really important that as a senior management team, we greet the children off the bus because you can tell that they've had breakfast, that they've had a good night's sleep, that they've had a row, and if they're tired, then we can ring up the parents and find out why they're tired and find the root of the problem. This is New Woodland School. New Woodland School. Yeah! Nathan's been good. Excellent. If a child gets off shouting, screaming, you can start to deal with it. And often just a quiet word Take a deep breath, come and have a chat with me, is all that's needed. Obviously. At half past nine, we have a whole school assembly uh, where all the children come into the hall, which I also think is a crucial part of the day. Yesterday, we had some children who actually went and played football against another school. This young man was mentioned because, I don't know if you know it, but he is a particularly skilled footballer. Do you know what the teacher from the other school said to me about this young man? He managed to pass to all the boys in the team. Did you realise you were doing it? Yeah. For example, I would think of a focus that I'd agreed upon with the staff that we'd be thinking about that day perhaps unacceptable levels of name-calling. Cussing other people's mums, fantastic. Nico? I think these children, it's very pleasant to feel that you're part of a whole group. And this school is a community. Coming to help you, Clinton. Yeah, I am. Martin. <laughs> when they go back into their classrooms, they follow then the national curriculum for the morning. And that is quite structured. They will do their literacy, followed by their numeracy. The best therapy to us is education. Each class has no more than eight or nine children, with a teacher and at least one teaching assistant. Because you're not fair. What? You don't think I'm fair? No, not at all. Not at all. I work with a year six group. They're actually young boys that like music, like sport, but very lively, very... can be quite aggressive at times, quite loud. <laughs> Argumentative. They're getting to the stage where they're becoming young teenagers. Just have to be quick thinking, on the spot, sense of humour, and be able to to react to different children in different ways. No day is ever the same. No minute is ever the same. Who the fuck do you think I'm Come in, mate. Who the fuck do you think I'm Prick. Who the fuck do you think I'm Well done, New Woodlands has a special chill out room where the pupils can go to calm down, discuss their feelings, and try to sort things out away from the classroom. Having a snap, talking, or are we having fun? Kevin runs it on a daily basis. His work is never ending. Liz, can you come in? There's been trouble that morning on one of the buses bringing the children to school. 
If you'd stayed sitting in your seat, yeah? And then when the gentleman said, right, you can get off the bus now, if you'd got up, stood up, walked down the bus, come off the bus into school, none of this would happen, yeah? I said, don't touch me again, yeah, then he thought, right, that's it. Then he went, he said, I'm taking you to the headmaster. Kevin bases himself in that room for most of the day. They like to talk to him when he's on his own. Sometimes I'll be in there as well. There might be an issue that the boys felt hasn't been dealt with very well. And then we say, OK, that's your opportunity then. Now's your time. You've got your room to yourself. Tell us. And then, if possible, we can help. They might like just to sit there. Very often, Kevin would say, do you just need five minutes? They might have dug themselves into a hole in the classroom, got into a real dispute with their teacher. And unless they absent themselves from that, that they, they can't cope with it. So to go into that room for a few minutes, they get their pride back. Can we drop our pencil? Thank you very much. That's better. Pa uh, Robert, Robert, here. We do take children from 5 to 11, and some of them have attention deficit disorder, some are conduct disorders, some have oppositional defiance disorders, some it's just gone wrong in their primary school. I think there's lots of reasons why it is, boys. I think that there's a lack of male role models not just in families, but also in primary schools in particular. I think there's a gross misunderstanding of boys because you get a lot of boys, boisterousness, and um, just generally wanting to get stuck in and enjoy themselves as being read as not fitting into a classroom situation. A crucial aim for the teaching staff at New Woodlands is to get as many pupils as possible reintegrated back into mainstream schools. This is a gradual process and begins with some pupils attending on a part-time basis. I have eight boys in my class now. Four of them are now at mainstream schools. One boy does two days a week and two boys do three days a week. And the other boys have seen that and they're really now keen to achieve what the other boys have. So I'm really pleased that they have experienced that so that they have something to, to work towards. Miss Blackie's B-L-A-C-K. Well done. For myself, it's building a relationship with each individual child, knowing what works for them, knowing what doesn't work for them, appreciating the positive sides to their characters, and they all have them. It's finding them and then getting them to accept the praise because in the beginning it's difficult for them to accept because they've been so used to the negative remarks. I've got a best handwriting in this class. Everyone's got lovely handwriting in this yeah. class. It's not going to happen overnight. Look. You can't click your fingers and change these children. You've got to keep on working. I knew what I was coming to because I had experience with, with children with emotional and behavioural difficulties before. But after the first week, I thought, my goodness me, what have I done? <laughs> this is going to be difficult. They would fight each other. They would throw things around the classroom. They would pick up chairs and try and throw them. They would climb out of the windows. They would climb on the roof. They would kick each other underneath the table, try and um, annoy each other behind my back and then lie about it. It was very stressful, if I'm honest. But I knew what they were doing. Oh, it be. If you know what they're doing, you can understand why they're doing it. And then you're halfway there. Sometimes I step back and I look and I think, wow, how have we done that? Has that really happened? That they have come together as they, they have and the fact that they can do it. 9, 18 plus 10, you've got 28 rides too, okay. 
A core element of the New Woodlands philosophy is the school's reward system, where points are given for good behaviour and taken away for bad. Just look at those numbers and think. It provides the pupils with positive incentives. And the children come in each day and they don't have any points and it's a bit like us going to work and you have to earn your money and they can get up to 100 points a day. If they earn more than 425 then they're entitled to do an activity on a Friday afternoon. Um, but the key is he with the most points gets the first choice. What will happen tomorrow for those people who have earned all their points? Go out to the park. For those who are so there's quite a big incentive for children to behave. And the more they actually behave and engage with it, the better their behaviour comes, so you can wean them off this extrinsic motivator, so ready to go back into mainstream school. Do you think, if you put it right, you can still get your full point? Excellent. Pat yourself on the back. So well done for the trying. From my record here, you've got 100 on Friday, 100 on Monday, you've got 100. The reward system and very clear boundaries is essential for, for a simple reason. A lot of the children don't always get it at home, uh, which is why they think it's okay to wheel and deal when they come to school and you get big children having tantrums because adults have said no to them. And really, school needs to teach them how to fit into society. Brown, is it convenient to do the activities? Hello, I'm Trudy. I tabulate the points, and on a Friday morning, I go into each class with a list of what the activities are. They might be a trip to an adventure playground, some cooking, um, a trip up the park to play football or go on a BMX bike. And it's all about wanting to earn things, to make yourself feel better and to realise that the more effort you put into something, the happier you feel. So, I'm going to start with your highest point earner. We have Robert, who got 500 points. Congratulations. And we have Sai, who got 500 points. Congratulations. <laughs> It's absolutely vital to monitor their behaviour on a daily basis. We monitor the chill-outs, we monitor um, the times of the day, the flashpoints, whether there's a pattern, whether it's the beginning of the week, the middle of the week, the end of the week. All those kinds of data are really important because they can actually indicate that maybe it's every Monday a child kicks off and he has a bad day. To find out the why, you have to know the wins. And nearly always, with all the children, there is a, there is a definite pattern to their week. Now, let's look at the other thing. Stereotype. How can we stereotype people? In what way do we do that? Yes. What we really look for in the staff here is people, is men and women, who are very sound primary school practitioners and people who are prepared to perhaps go the extra mile when taking these children forward so they can achieve. You're black, and you got to do it like you're black. you got to do that way. OK. And you're white, yeah. you got to do it your way. OK. you got to do it. It depends how, what voice you do it. Excellent. Can we clap for Sai again? And with the emotion, I go on the level with them, I go on the floor with them and see to their point. When they're upset, I could put my arms around them to say, yes, you've got a friend here you can talk to. We've got lawyers, we've got... Policemen. Policemen and police women. I know. Yes. I always give them one ultimating word. I can. And yes, you can. <laughs> Preventative work is an important element of the New Woodlands philosophy. Their outreach team of five teachers take their expertise of working with children with challenging behaviour out to all the schools in the borough. I think their work is crucial, not only to New Woodlands, but to Lewisham, in so much as they, working in liaison with the schools, can identify children who need support. 
Now, it could be that the outreach teachers would put in some new woodland strategies and that within the school they could actually cope with that. Or it might be in some cases that the children would be referred to come to here. So what we're trying to do, I think, in Lewisham is have a system whereby we're all working together and, and doing the best for the children. We've had some very, very difficult children. Last year in particular, we had a year six group which with a disproportionate number of difficult children. And Duncan, who is the head of New Woodlands, is um, a head that I have an enormous amount of respect for in the borough because it's the one school, New Woodlands, that really supports schools. They, they're out there in the community saying, look, we can give you our support. And he suggested, you know, that Shirley come in and work with us. On a typical day, we would visit three to four primary schools. And during that day, it may be that we are working with an individual child. It could be a whole class circle time session. It could be a group of children doing circle of friends. Good morning, Callum. How are you today? This year, we've identified uh, a child in year two who, up until now, has had an, a, a range of sort of very sort of tricky behaviours and we looked into what we could provide for him and one of the things was a circle of friends because we identified that the big issue for him was that he was very alienated from his peer group. If you haven't got anything... Circle of friends is a technique of involving the classmates of a child who's been showing signs of challenging behaviour. It gives them the opportunity of helping to find ways of improving life for everyone concerned. Have a think about any good news. Do what not? have we noticed that, that Callum has been doing, which has been really good, and we're really proud of him. Hands down, we're going to go in this direction. And if you want to say something, contribute. But if you don't, that's fine. There were issues around this child needing more support from his peers and looking at their image of him in their minds. And we have to shift that. If you don't shift what they believe about the child, then he's picking that up all the time. In everything he does, he's watching and waiting for them to, to look horrified at what he's doing. He's getting really good at listening better and sitting better. Okay. Listening to the teacher when the teacher asks him to do something. He sits down at his table and doesn't fight with Harry or Mohammed no more. They try to start off positively and talk about things that are going well and improvements that are happening. And they also focus on one or two difficulties as they see them. So it's very much about what the children's perception of things is. Anybody like to tell <coughs> about any difficulties that they think Callum has been having this week that you've noticed? OK, yeah. Um, he's just fighting a tiny bit, but not that much. Some fighting a tiny bit. When the teacher was doing the register, he spoke all the way through. We've had many other children that New Woodlands have been involved in, some of whom actually the decision has been made at the end that the, the outreach is not going to work for them. They need to move to New Woodlands. And so they've had a temporary placement there and then been reintegrated into the school community. When the boy was drinking, he had a pretty sad and he, the boy said, Oi. So somebody, somebody pushed his push head. Okay. So we want Callum to remember about not pushing people, and not hurting people. If something, if something's going wrong, we'd like him to ask his circle of friends for some help. Is that right? Improvements do take quite a long time. When you talk about behaviour, it, it, it takes quite a long time to see even small improvements. And when you do, um, it's really, really great. When I first came here, um, it was good to help Callum because it will help him do his learning more and make him start listening to the teacher and stuff. The best bit about Circle of Friends is helping Callum because if he's doing anything bad, you just need to like talk to him and make him like get better at being good. If I don't have a circle for it, so I'll get better and better and better and better. And how do you think it's helping you? What, what, what are you doing that's different now, do you think? Being good. I think you're being good. OK. I love Circle of Friends because it, we're helping Callum to behave. Very quickly. 
Show us a really good city. Good well morning. done. So, because he was very alienated, and a lot of his lashing out was because he was alienated. And it's extraordinary, isn't it, that you don't pick that up earlier, that actually this child is saying, be my friend. It's as simple as that. Why is the circle of friends important, Kevin? That's what we're thinking about. I have one more thing to say about my house. About them and my house. OK. They can come to my house. Oh, that's lovely. But they have to be close to flowers because there is loads of flowers. Oh, lovely. One of the things Callum's saying there is a way of saying thank you to everybody. And that's how I would like us all to finish off now. Kira, thank you for coming to Circle today. Okay. You say thank you. They are very emotionally intelligent. It's something that we have tried to develop in the school and feel it's fundamentally important to all children, not just to Callum. We actually do believe that supporting Callum supports the children, and this has been fantastic because they've been able to see it for themselves. Thank you for coming to the circle. 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 That's it. Thank you for coming to the circle. Thank you for coming to the circle. Thank you. Thank you to everybody. Well done. Right, we need to take half a step. That way, Joe yourself Look, step that way. Back in New Woodlands, it's coming to the end of term, and secondary school beckons for year six. That's Look nice, happy Jason. that you're leaving. Nice, Clint. Here they have the support, you know, the encouragement. There's a lot more adults to pull them up if they've made a mistake. Get real. Joe, go back, darling. Whether when they go into the secondary school, it's a lot more children, a lot more moving around, and it's like the big word. You know, they can't cope with it. Um, and some of them get really emotional about it. You know, I've had big boys the size of houses that are actually in tears because they don't want to leave. And you try and encourage them and support them and say, this is how it's going to be, you know, this is what you might need to do, um, and hope for the best. We've got a few boys here that are quite boisterous, quite loud, quite big, quite what I would call street kids. Um, and within this premises and within this environment, they come across as nothing bothers them. There's no, they have no fear. Um, but if you took them into a room and you said to them, come on, tell us how you feel. Um, I could even say for an example this week, there's a boy particularly in this class that sat on my lap and cried in tears that he didn't want to leave. Oh, look at that Charlie. Yes! Oh, right. Jump, jump. Joe, can we have some more smiles? We do a lot of sport with the boys, not just to wear them out <laughs> so they're, they're readier for learning, but because we truly believe that they need competition. Society is tough as you grow up, and you have to prepare children for that. And it's vital that children learn to lose and to win. And if we go around pretending everybody's a winner, then what we produce is children, that when things don't go the right way for them, actually crumble and fall to pieces. So it is important at a very early age. If you can teach a child the meaning of the word no and how to lose, whether it's a game of snakes and ladders or whether it's a running race or a game of football, then you do that child a great service. The best of luck to right. all four. Get set, go! Go, go, on, go, on, go, go, go! go. Can you go off the track? Actually, you can wait, so wait, so wait. Yeah, as long as you're in line with the hurdles, okay, you're OK. You ready? Right, you ready, boys? Are you ready? On your marks, get set, set. up. Oh, excuse me, full start. start. Even on school sports day, the staff need to be on their toes. The word gets out, somebody's done a runner. You're told not to leave the premises. Now you're shifting medals. What do you say to Adele for getting here? Yeah, it's it's Rebecca. Rebecca, what do you say to them? Come in. What do you say? Come here. No, you don't say sorry to them. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. Yeah. Thank you. These two people just helped you. I was just on the phone to the police, which would mean you would be, wouldn't be in this week. Get in those games. Where are you going? If you stay very calm and consistent with these children, they will respond. 
very often just a hand on a shoulder, just walk away from the situation. It's amazing how nearly always that will work. So when you react like that over something that's quite small, yeah. sometimes people sort of build it up and do more to you, don't they? Mm -hmm. You know that, don't you? Yeah. So why don't you just sit here, get your breath back, and okay. just show what you're made of and just go back and join in the races, yeah? Okay. Is that a good idea? Yeah. Okay. I think all of us as a staff actually wonder how they manage so well sometimes because I know that all it needs as an adult is something in your life to actually go off balance. These children come in day after day after day and they do function and I think they function very well. What would you like, Karen? No, birthday cake and custard. Like birthday cake and custard. He wants birthday cake and custard. The job is never the same. The children, it gives you fantastic challenges. There's a, also a wonderful opportunity to work with families, work with parents. No two days are ever the same. And yes, I, I do really enjoy working here. And, and you really do feel that you can make a difference. I think the impact of the work we do in New Woodland School is to keep as many children in possi as possible in full-time education and hopefully in mainstream education. I think there's a lot of hope as long as you catch them young enough. And when I say young enough, hopefully under the age of eight to nine. The older they get, the more difficult it gets. But I do think that you know, we need to look as a society why there are so many children that don't fit into our education system. It's wonderful to see children go back to mainstream school because a lot of them arrive here wanting that. They don't want to stay at New Woodlands forever, which actually surprised me when I first started because I did think that they would have thought that way, but they don't. They want to go, they want to move on, they want to get back into mainstream. So obviously when a child in your class does achieve that, it's wonderful, it's great, that's what we're here for for the future a lot of these children who do go back to mainstream now is to be able to integrate with the other children and to be able to do what other people's children do. Because we have a motto here and it sounds, well, I believe it, don't offer these children anything you wouldn't want your own children offered. And if you just say that to yourself every now and again, it's a very good yardstick to live by. Mm -hmm.